I remember the fall of 2019 like it was just yesterday. It was one of the lowest points of my entire existence. I just moved over 2,000 miles away from friends and family I loved, and already that crushed me emotionally on day one as I unpacked in pure disbelief of the new chapter I was beginning in my life. Unfortunately, throughout the first few weeks, I failed to make any new connections, and this discouraged me so much that I fell into a deep depression and shut myself in my own dorm room for a whole entire month. The only times I'd ever leave was when I had class. It was truly awful, but I felt so hopeless at the time that I just couldn't push myself. Don't get me wrong, I had friends back home that I could text, but the human mind can only do so much without in-person contact. I remember one night just staring outside my window, nothing but a feeling of cold and empty loneliness as my sanity started to get lost in the darkness. My weak shoulders couldn't bear the weight of the depression anymore. It was at that moment I thought to myself, Maybe I could just jump out of this window head first and be free of this agony. I think that was probably the scariest time looking back, but it almost felt like nothing back then. In a time of absolute desperation to make the pain go away, even just the slightest bit, I turned to a former passion of mine, content creating. And in a way, it saved my life. I used to make career mode content in the past for FIFA 15 all the way to FIFA 18. I slowly fell out of love with it though because all I did was follow what every other creator was doing. The old three games and episode format. But here I was again, two years later. But I wanted to do things differently this time. I didn't want to fall out of love with content creation again. That's how the format you see today was born. My main goal was just to have fun editing the videos while adding my own personal touch to them. That way, it didn't feel as repetitive as before. I remember when I uploaded the first Arsenal Career Mode episode in late September 2019. I had this idea that since I was doing a career mode with a big team with this brand new entertaining style, the video would undoubtedly bang. I was at 30 subs at the time, by the way. I can't lie. My false optimism led me to a path of pure disappointment when I saw 30 views in 10 hours, but as we all know, that was just the beginning. Arsenal came and went, then it was Leverkusen, but I think most of you remember Crystal Palace. I remember episode 1 of Palace doing significantly better than any video I'd ever made previously. On top of that, I actually DM'd Cutsy asking for feedback on the first episode. Dude gave me a shout out on his Twitter. I never even asked for. To this day, I am so grateful because since the day he gave me the shout, I haven't seen a day below 200 video views. Which yeah, might sound like nothing now, but that was huge for a small guy like me back then. Next thing I knew, a few months of consistent growth and there I was at the big 1000. <laughs> My friend back in October 2019 messaged me saying I'd hit 1k, and I doubted her saying I'd be lucky to even hit 100. And here I was, on a cloudy March day in complete disbelief and happiness, and almost in near tears. It was then when I started believing in myself. I had rediscovered that lifelong ambition of becoming a YouTuber. No matter how many times I disregarded this dream in the past, it just kept finding me again. One of my favorite moments being in the career mode YouTube scene has to be the making of episode 16 for the Venezia career mode series. It was this incredible collaboration with FIFA fella, King CR7, Strat, Layers, Nino Sports, Alex Dov, Mitch, JJ Lawser, Patback, Tim Woods, Rads, Underrated Dogs, Eric. Sure, I could have just said a bunch of career mode YouTubers, but it wouldn't do justice to how important every single person's part in the video was. The vision of this episode was simple. I wanted to have a whole breaking news segment followed by multitudes of reactions including neutral fans and quote unquote Venezia supporters and the biased ESPN FC reporter. Looking back, it's crazy to even think that was all just for a FIFA transfer of all things. And just when you thought that was crazy, here was both Jem and Niren pretending to be radio hosts in this video. The fact that I managed to get these two in one of my videos is still surreal to me, and I can't thank them enough. I just remember laughing constantly putting this whole episode together, and to this day, it's one of my favorite videos on the channel. If I haven't said it already, thank you again to every single one of you who helped produce one of the fondest memories I have to this day. Let's fast forward to September when FIFA 21 season was upon us. Some of you may have remembered when I had the goal of 10k by the end of the year. How'd that go for you, Maxwell? I'll admit, I was pretty optimistic. It kind of matched that time when I was pretty optimistic back in September of 2019. But also just in general, FIFA 21 season, even at its peak, sucked. I had one spike and then it was back to the same growth rate. And of course, for anyone as optimistic as I was, it was soul crushing. I had told everyone, 
my family, my friends, my viewers, and all I could feel was embarrassment and failure. But this is when the idea of having friends in the community is so important. Already, editing is a pretty lonely job. I think any YouTuber can agree with me there. That being said, when things get tough, even if you're doing something you love, feeling lonely can be true hell. You let yourself mindlessly race through your own thoughts, you start doubting your abilities, and in my personal experience, it can be absolute hell. What really didn't help either was looking at my analytics every night. To every creator watching this, don't be like me. Limit yourself to one check a week. You want to see your progress and performance in a macro sense. Looking at your stats every day only makes you depressed. YouTube is a long-term kind of growth. Remember that. So a big shout out to a real one, Mr. Sir BCHD. If it wasn't for all those daily conversations we had throughout all of last fall, I don't know how much of the stress I could have taken before giving up. I did manage to hit 5,000 before the end of the year, and that was all thanks to a YouTuber who has for some reason believed in me since I was at 60 subscribers. That's right, Niren. I have never met a more considerate person on this platform. I have asked Niren to help me out on so many occasions that at this point I just feel bad asking. He could easily turn down my requests, and yet he doesn't. He believes in me that much to keep investing his time into helping some small pleb like me, and it really makes me believe I can achieve my dreams. I don't know Niren that well, probably won't ever unfortunately, but the impact he's had on me as a creator and as a person has been immense. A lot of you may remember his community post promoting the Leicester City series finale back in December of 2020, which helped me amass nearly 2,000 subscribers in one single month. Of course, I wanted to reach a goal by the end of the year numbers-wise, but I had a much bigger reason for asking him to promote this specific video. When it comes to series finales, most career mode series, I felt there was something missing a uniqueness to the finale in contrast to the rest of the series. I wanted to make this series finale by far the most hyped video. I mean, it only felt fair to the viewer who had taken time out of their day to watch the episodes prior. That's why in every finale, there's an intro like no other. Lester's finale was that, but so much more. I remember around episode 14 of Lester, I started thinking of what I should do for the finale, and funnily enough, I couldn't come up with a clear concept. But then one day, as a shower thought, it hit me. What if I did some kind of tribute to Vishai? The night prior to writing the script, I watched episode 19 of an anime called Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba. Throughout the last part of the episode was this incredible fight scene, with a song that overwhelmed me with emotion. The next morning, I listened to this song on repeat as I typed up the series finale script. Every time this song hit the peak at the chorus as I was thinking of what to add in the tribute, all I could feel was a storm of emotion and my spine tingling. My headspace had dived into the most emotional place it could find, and as a result, I produced one of the best scripts I have ever made for this channel. This tribute to Vishai allowed me to explore the influence he's had on not just Leicester City, but the people of Leicester itself, and just how big of an impact he had on them. I read article after article, watched video after video. If there was anyone I could think of that could represent the beauty of football in this era, it'd be Vishai. I can't even lie, man. When it came to putting this video together, I got really emotional. My voice delivery was not great, but the words telling the concise but lovely story of Vishai's influence at Leicester just reduced me to tears at some points. In my many years of editing, I've never had a video of my own creation get me so emotional, and for that reason, it's one of my favorite videos on the channel. I want to make more videos like this. This is why I asked Niren to promote this video. I knew it wasn't the greatest video of all time, but I wanted as many people to see this video because of how special it was to me. So Niren, I know I've said this about 5,000 times, but thank you so much for everything. Into the new year, I'll be honest, I wasn't having as much fun producing career mode content as I did the previous year. The ceiling of creativity for a soulless game like FIFA is only so high, and I reached it. It got worse and worse every month, as at points I genuinely felt like I was just an emotionless factory pumping out episodes. Around the same time, I uploaded a video called The Fall of Career Mode YouTube. To sum it up, it was years of my frustrations that I had with the scene put into one video. I talked about how the videos at the top of the search results were undeserving of the top, I made multiple claims about how a lot of these videos were excessively long, barely edited, and that so many smaller YouTubers, including myself, deserved way more. Sure, it was a little bit too aggressive, but I still believe a good amount of what I said in this video. I gained a lot of insight from multiple YouTubers in the scene as a result of this video, and it made me start coming to realizations of my own future. As much as I did want to help a community, my life goal also wasn't just to be a FIFA YouTuber. 
I wanted to be more than that. At the same time, I was getting pretty demotivated and the quality of the videos got worse because of it. So when I read some of these insights from guys who rely on uploads to pay rent, feed families, it made me realize that no matter how dead the game, the views were, how much they were falling out of love with their content, they had to keep constantly producing videos. I had a similar experience when I started the Etskabeg Awa career mode. I told myself this would be the last series I ever do and I truly had to push myself to work on this series because I absolutely hated making it. That being said, unlike the YouTube as I talked about earlier, I had an escape. This wasn't my job set in stone, and I didn't have a whole base dedicated to a small niche. Unlike those who do rely on their uploads, I could avoid this trap of having to practically produce content against my will altogether and switch content. In a way, it made me respect them more for how much they're able to push. I want to elaborate more on the content trap though. No matter what, numbers won't mean anything if you're not happy producing the content. The farther you go down this hole, the more of a toll your mental health will take, and the faster you'll fall out of love with content creation. I've never fallen to the far depths of hell when it comes to the content trap, but I I do know someone who has. This person has made me aware of how bad it can get, and his words will never leave my mind. I don't want to say who this person is because I want to respect this privacy, but all the advice he's given me has helped me shape my mentality on balancing mental health and content creation. And for that, thank you man. But how does one avoid the trap? It's not easy. But I guess the only advice I could give is to be proactive. The thing about YouTube is that it's a game of being proactive. No matter whether your channel is performing poorly or amazing, you always have to think in advance because you never know what could happen. Your poor performance could get worse, or your amazing success could start taking a dip. And no matter whether you're enjoying the content you are making, you always have to think in the future and change it up from time to time to keep yourself refreshed. So with that all being said, should you become a FIFA career mode YouTuber in this time and age? In my opinion, no. If you're doing it for fun, go ahead. You'll love it. But if you have a goal, and you're starting out with career mode, you have to immediately think about what the next step is after career mode. If you're watching this and you've already established yourself now, you too should start thinking about what the next step is. The last thing I want is anyone suffering the same way I did when I was producing the Awa series. The thing about FIFA career mode content is that it's so difficult to differentiate. You have your career mode series, and then pretty much everything else. I say everything else because experiments and rebuilds feel so one-dimensional after you do like two of them. Growing in the career mode community is extremely difficult, and with how dead the game and the traffic is, I don't advise it. I get that FIFA 22 includes a create a club feature, which could have some hype, but mods have already done this, and done this probably better than whatever EA is about to give us. And sure, I amassed about 6,000 subscribers from career mode, but let's be fair here. My growth was in no way natural. I caught multiple breaks and received multiple shoutouts. I'm appreciative of it all, but I can't help but discredit myself because of it. So come to the last part of this video. What's next for this channel? Firstly, I want to announce that there will not be an Etskabeg Awa series finale. This might sound disappointing, but every time I see the word career mode, I feel sick. It's come to a point with FIFA content where I just cannot stand the idea of FIFA itself. And that's my own doing, that's my fault. But this is for the better that I don't produce a half ass series finale. That being said, also San Marino will not be happening this FIFA. But don't worry, San Marino will still happen, just another time during FIFA 22 season. In fact, I don't really deem San Marino as career mode content, so expect it to be an annual thing once 2021 is complete. And obviously some of you will want that fix a career mode content, so let me provide you someone so deserving of everything and more. I know I've mentioned this channel so much, but even in times where I can't stand to watch career mode, I still love his stuff. If you want the most entertaining career mode content on this planet right now, you have to watch Strahd. The amount of belief I have in this guy is immense, and the day he hits 1k, I'll probably be just as excited as I was when I hit the number myself. So I am begging you, show this dude some love. He is one of the funniest, most entertaining guys in this scene. But what about the direction of this channel? Well, if you've been watching any of the most recent videos, that's the exact direction. Football content. The world of football has already allowed me to explore many different stories and try new things, and although the transition period is upon me and I'm struggling for views, I love what I'm creating. If you haven't already, watch some of the football content. There's a mixture of fun, lighthearted videos and the video essays that try to capture the emotional aspect of the beautiful game. I've never felt a true connection with football and I think this could help me strengthen that bond. My main goal is to learn more about this game than ever before, capture the emotions that it brings and connect with others in this community. This whole journey has been filled with the highs of motivation and success, along with the lows of self-doubt and stress. That's just how the life of a content creator is. 
It's hard, man. And even with all the hardships, I sometimes downplay my successes because I look at my other friends, following the paths of becoming a doctor or something else that I deem more important to life in my own eyes. But a good friend once told me that all walks of life are important to society. Medicine is just as important as art. Art brings us inspiration, happiness, and meaning. Living in a place of art and entertainment makes you happier, and happier people live longer. Doctors and artists both extend human life and make it better. So if you're a content creator like me who undermines their own work, just remember that. I want to thank every single friend I made in the career mode community for all they've done for me. You will never understand how much your words of encouragement and support have helped me actually believe in myself. I may be leaving this community, but I ain't leaving any of you whatsoever. So here's to more Mario Kart shenanigans one day. But the biggest thank you, to you, the viewer. You're making someone's dreams slowly come true. Some nights I'll just look outside my window, stare at the stars like a child lost in his thoughts, and just smile. Because sure, I haven't made it yet, but I know I will one day, and it's because of all of you on this journey with me. Whether or not you stay for the new content or not, I will always appreciate every single one of you throughout this beautiful journey. Your comments and support have pushed me farther than I could have ever imagined. Your messages saying how my content made your day or inspired you to become a creator just make me tear up every time. I myself have used other creators' content as an escape. I have been inspired by many creators of the past and even the present, and to be able to see it the other way around warms my heart and puts the stupidest smile on my face. You are making me dream. And for that, you allow me to have a purpose.